and welcome back. Bob in Davenport, Iowa, watching us on Free Speech TV. You're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Yes, uh, Mark, I want to thank you for uh, uh, introducing the Voter Roll Integrity Act. Thank you, Bob. Um, I'm working hard to find co-sponsors across the country and to see about um, getting some people in the Senate to uh, to sponsor one. Uh, I've had some conversation with Bernie Sanders' office about that, and hopefully he may do something. But um, I, I really see this as the way to, to save our democracy, and I think you'll probably agree. But I'm I'm trying to imagine like what the opposition might drum up as as uh, opposing arguments to the Voter Roll Integrity Act? Oh, they'll probably claim, Bob, um, my guess is the same reason why they did interstate cross-check to begin with, right? That somehow there's uh, people voting more than once and we've got to uh, get rid of the, the people. You know, remember, I mean, to this day, Donald Trump is still claiming illegal voters uh, were more than the three million votes he lost by because he's desperate to claim he actually won the election. They'll do something along those lines. Uh, I think what we need to do is just show the facts that it's been proven that they've dumped people off of uh, the voter rolls that uh, were incorrectly dumped over and over and over again, and that really this was an attempt to do just that, to dump a bunch of legal voters uh, off that they thought weren't going to be their voters. So I think we just need to keep taking those facts and figures out there um, and uh, try to get more sponsors for the bill and get the word out on this. But I agree with you. I mean, those de those democracy issues are really at the core, um, because if we don't have a democracy, a lot of these other issues are, are definitely going to go down for us, uh, from tax reform to health care to uh, infrastructure and, and everything else. It's important that everyone be able to vote uh, who can vote and, and that um, we don't set up artificial barriers that we see right now set up across the country. Rick in San Jose, California. You're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Hello, Tom. Congress po Congressman Pocan, thank you for all that you are doing. I'm uh, I'm you, I'm very pleased to to know that there are uh, still representatives out there like you, and I'm hoping that there'll be many many more. I am um, calling about um, uh, the Democratic overall strategy for 2018, 2020, and beyond that I think um, should be immediate, aggressive and broadcast very loudly every single day starting right now because of uh, i'm in terror of uh what's coming up in 2018 and then 2020 with the census and, and all that where other than nancy pelosi's statement where is the huge democratic immediate plan to bring back my country yeah, Rick, so this is one where I am optimistic. I, I think something I've seen that I'm encouraged by is that the congressional Democrats um, and the senatorial Democrats are on the same page, understanding that at the core, we need to have a good, strong economic message and that much will go from there. In Wisconsin, we had a 200,000 uh, Democratic voter drop off in the presidential election, uh, second only to Mississippi. And we used to be one of the top three for turnout states. But we didn't have a good core economic message in 2016, and we had a lot of voters who stayed home. So the fact that the better deal proposal that's been put forward by uh, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi on behalf of uh, Democrats in the House and the Senate really gets at a lot of those core economic issues that if we can re-engage with voters that we are there fighting for the middle class and those aspiring to be in the middle class and we can explain everything from antitrust to wages and all the rest i think we can make that case it's our uh, middays with mark hour congressman mark pocan taking your calls and tony in albuquerque new mexico you are on the earth congressman pocan tony tony's not listening to his phone you got to listen to your phone uh, Gizmo, in uh, driving through Pennsylvania, you're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Well, thank you. Co Congressman, uh, actually driving through Ohio, but that's okay. okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm a trucker somewhere in America. Uh, I'm a definitely uh, uh, a Bernie-crat, uh, Congressman. And um, I was just curious here. Now, you've got a caucus in uh, the Congress and one in the Senate trying to fix the ACA at this point. Are you a member of the, uh, the Congressional Caucus to fix the ACA now? Well, the, 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 I understand um, Democrats in general, we have said we're willing to sit down if they'll bring us to sit down because we have plenty of ideas and suggestions. Some, they're going to be a little more progressive, like having a public option that I don't know if the Republicans will go for, but a lot of other ones. 
there's a subcommittee in the Senate, the help subcommittee that Senator um, Patty Murray and Lamar Alexander are the, the chair and the ranking on that are working on something. And then there's this um, no labels, uh, what do they call themselves, uh, problem solvers caucus that um, allegedly is working on it. But Paul Ryan's already said they're not going to look at any new proposals. We're sticking with it. So the activity is on the Senate right now, unless Paul Ryan suddenly um, – decides he's going to stand up to the president, which I don't see happening. So what we're really watching is those conversations that they're having over August. But we have said at any time we are willing to sit down and have a real uh, dialogue about what needs to be fixed around the ACA so that tens of millions of people don't lose health insurance. And uh, we're still open to do that. We, the Democratic Party? Yes. yes and and the so there, there isn't a specific Senate. caucus within the Democratic Party devoted to health care? Um, no, no. I mean, I think what the gentleman's referring to in the last week, there's been news about the help subcommittee in the Senate uh, and that there's this problem solvers, no label caucus that's generally um, of people who are in competitive districts who are trying to show they work across the aisle um, working on something. However, uh, again, it's not um, Paul Ryan has been very clear that they're not going to do anything different in the House. So all the action really uh, would be in the Senate and they still haven't done their vote. So that's what we're watching the closest. Yeah. Tom in Towson, Maryland, you are on the air with Congress in Pocan. All right. So because of uh, what Trump is, is was made from society, um, how are you going to fix it with reform? I'm sorry. Could you ask that question again, Tom? I, I got a little – it went out right. for a second. Right. Uh, so because what Trump is – because Trump is a result of society, how would you – how what is your plan to fix so uh, tom do you mean like trump trump m many of trump's behaviors are reflections of dysfunction in our culture so how can you yeah. fix that without fixing our culture is that your question yeah, kind of yeah yeah okay yeah I, well uh, tom i mean first of all i don't really feel that donald trump is um reflective of the country at least as i see it and the people i talk to i i think there are there's an element, right? We know when Barack Obama got elected, uh, we had um, a, a part of it was uh, this anti-government part of the Tea Party, and part of it was outright racism uh, that created the Tea Party, and that's been really our, our huge downfall since 2010. I think Donald Trump really was reflective, um, you know, of this kind of populist, xenophobic, um, you know, uh, some people feel like they're losing grasp of being in power in this country. Uh, that's a big element of what he has, but that's not the majority of the country. Um, that's why he can do pretty much anything and hold on to 35 or 36 percent, but not much more than that. And the rest of the people are concerned that the direction he's taking us is directionless, and it's more based on you know some ideas that pop into his head or, or, or he tweets out. So, I, again, I don't think I, I agree with the premise that he's reflective of society. Certainly there are some in society who don't like the fact that our culture uh, is changing and maybe different people will be in power in the future, uh, and they don't want to give up for white males. But I, I don't see that him as really representative of the majority of society. James in Orlando, West Virginia. You're on the air with Congressman Pokin. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Hartman. Thank you, Mr. Pokin. You're doing a great service for your country. Uh, I'm a disabled Vietnam veteran, and I'm sitting here looking at the v, v, uh, VFW magazine on page 12. Uh, the Trump administration is going to cut the benefits. 225,000 vets. Um, it, it don't look good for us. I know. I guarantee you those vets had to fight every inch of the way for their benefits. And it says here they're going to take, uh, let me see this, uh, $3.2 billion away from these vets next year. Hmm. That's going to really hurt us. Do you have any comment on that? Yeah, I'll tell you, James, if I can offer maybe a little more general, because this is something we've seen happen even pre-Donald Trump. So this is the Republican Party, and Donald Trump is symptomatic of it as well. Uh, you know, they don't believe in public institutions, so they want to take money from the VA system and, and put it, for example, towards um, choice is what they call it. But it's taking money away from a system that works well for veterans and saying you can go to other doctors with it. But every time you take away that uh, benefit that, that institution that we provide that benefit for, the more we risk providing those benefits. So I think that's been something that happened even pre-Donald Trump. 
um, that there's always lip service, right, about veterans. Um, but we don't, let's face it, we don't pay people well in the military compared to all the military contractors. And then we often don't want to take care of people after they've uh, put their service in for this country. And we're seeing that uh, slide happen again. So I, I guess I'd just say, James, it's not unique to Donald Trump. It's kind of symptomatic of the current Republican Party. And that's why we need to push back. You know, even my Tea Party uncle, after he goes through all the complaints about the federal government, he usually ends it with, but leave my VA alone. Um, we need to protect those benefits for people who served us. Congressman, we have just a minute and 15 seconds or thereabouts until the end of the hour. Um, uh, your thoughts on what's coming up that we should be paying attention to, what the pressure points might be, where we should be calling our members of Congress, the, the, the big things that we should be looking for going forward and doing for them? Yeah, I think for this month, because it is the month we're not around, we've got to be afraid of what could happen without Congress around. So is that any of those recess appointments and be ready to act? And I know the indivisible groups, for example, in this area, uh, they're so organized. I love it. They put out something. If, if announcement happens before 2 p.m., there's a rally at 5 o'clock that day. If the announcement happens after 2, it's the next day at a certain time. They're getting yeah. ready for it. We need to be ready for that. And we need to be ready for whatever might happen on health care in case they try to pull something really fast by calling the Senate in. Let's just remember, even though it's allegedly the congressional recess, uh, we've got to watch it even closer so they don't pull something fast on us. Be ready to contact your members of Congress. Be ready to act. I, I have heard stories that in order to prevent uh, you know, Trump from, for example, firing Jeff Sessions and then recess appointing somebody to replace him immediately, uh, which he could do if, if, Congress, if the Senate goes into recess, that the Senate specifically was, uh, the, be, whether it was Mitch McConnell being upset with Trump or whether it was Chuck Schumer, you know, forcing it, might not go into recess. You know anything about that? Anything could happen, and um, we got to be vigilant. So they're going to cover their backsides. Fascinating. Congressman Mark Pocan, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, of course, Tom. Thank you. It is such an honor and a pleasure to have you. Congressman Mark Pocan, you can tweet him at Rep. Mark Pocan, his website, pocan.house.com. We'll be back. You're listening to Tom Hartman.